It's Saturday the 18th of December. Welcome to Narrabra at the James Pill. Hope you're well, thanks for joining me. Well, this is the beautiful up and over bridge that I passed under yesterday. It's bright and early this morning and I'm going to the petrol station up here to get myself some bacon. Well, get me and Dave some bacon so we can start the day off on a high. We've got some cruising to do today and I think it's going to be a chilly one. Well, this is ridiculous. They don't sell bacon. That's the best I can get. I don't think Jamie Oliver's been anywhere near that bloody sandwich. Oh, typical. Not one of these things. They're also a bit horrible. It's really good this kind of code that cyclists have where they ring their bell to warn you that they're coming. Stand at the side, it's great. I end up thanking them. Anyway, it's not exactly what I wanted, but managed to get ourselves some fresh breakfast. Got some croissant today, so uh, hopefully Dave will appreciate that when we get back. So I've got my ash pan here. This is all hot, this ash. It's a little bit of dust, I won't lie. And because this is hot and giving off toxic gases still, what I do is I put it outside the boat to cool down for a little bit and then I can use it. Oh, hello. Morning. Well it's not a bad spot for breakfast. Um, I'm looking at the map book. I've got a couple of locks to do and then I get to page 51. Page 51 is Rickmansworth which is um, my destination for Christmas. So that's really good. That's near where my parents live as well. So then it's gonna be a case of finding moorings, is whether we go to Croxley and make our peace with that, or whether we go a bit further into Rickmansworth and see what we can find. It's busy down there. It's on the Metropolitan Line, so it's on the Tube Network. Right, let's go. Okay, we're off. Not long was the stay at the Grove, but Never mind. When I come back, kind of early in the new year, I'll stay a bit longer. But definitely next summer, I'll stay a couple of weeks here. The only problem is, for me, it's not very good on the old uh, EE mobile signal. So last night's video took about an hour to upload. Celebi. Right, there's a lovely mill house coming up just around the corner. Dave's waiting for me at the next lock. Happy days. Look at that. That's a beautiful property. What a lovely property. Place that is. Got well, another right angle turn coming up here. Hopefully there's no 
no boats coming. I haven't got a horn yet, but I've got a uh, lister. So they can probably hear me coming. Just going under a nice timber built bridge. 166. And straight ahead is Dave on narrowboat Furball. And he's set up a lot. So I can go straight in. go into the cabin and have a look at what fell off when I opened her up a little bit ago. Something slid off a counter. I'm usually pretty good at taking everything off that might break or leak or anything like that, so I'm curious as to what it is. Okay, that's lock 75 dealt with. I'm leaving Dave to tidy up the lock. I'm gonna go down and set up lock 76. And these are the two Casabri locks. And it was the fan that fell off the stove, um, which uh, has happened before. Well, this pound is looking a bit shallow. So I've just got to lock 76, Casabri Park lock. It's empty and you'll see that the paddles are up. That's because there's a sign there saying to leave them up and leave the lock empty because the lock leaks. So when the lock is, if, this, if the lock was constantly full and this wall leaks, it leaks and floods that house. So they ask for the water level to be kept at the lowest level, kind of as often as it possibly can be. Dave and I are a little bit curious. This lock is taking a long time to fill up with all paddles open. That pound behind us, which is quite small, has dropped by nearly a foot but this one just doesn't seem to be filling. And obviously it leaks badly. It's a question of how badly. The levels aren't too far away. But it's taken forever. Right, Dave's now walking back up to that lock up there to open up the top paddles, which were open when we came down to try to put some more water into this pound here before our boats hit the floor. You can see, you can see the gates and the paddles, the wall paddles quite really clearly, which you don't often see. Okay, you can make out there that Dave's just let some water through. I've just been to check on my boat and she's still floating but the levels are low. So this will help get the pressure right. So that that eventually fills up. I think actually that is going down. It looks like. Right, Dave's letting even more water through now. The levels have dropped even further. This is actually getting a little bit worrying. This pound here seems to be getting lower, or it has done. Now Dave's let more water in, see what happens. It just doesn't seem to be rising at all. And there's so many bubbles coming through the sides where it's leaking. Well, that's why this lock isn't filling. There's way more water coming out than going in. This is a nightmare. Okay, my boat's now grounded. Oh my God, this has been a nightmare. Dave's going to go and see if he can somehow drag me out of this, but he's tied his boat up, so I don't know what he's going to do. The levels are really low. Just hope we can get into that lock and close the gates before 
or whilst there's some bloody water left. Blimey, that was a really scary experience. My, I could see the, I could see the swim of my boat. Um, that pound totally drained. I could see the, well, not totally, obviously, but I could see the swim of my boat. It was resting on the rudder and on the hull. Oh my word! Ran up here, open up all of these paddles. We forced the gates down there. Some massive lads were passing at the time, which was rather helpful. So I'm going to close these ones now. We've raised the level a bit. Get down through that lock and get the hell out of here. Well, it's nice to be out of that lock. Um, this feels a bit strange to say, but it feels really good to be floating again. Man, seeing the swim and the rudder not in a boatyard is nothing short of horrific. Bloody hell. If it wasn't 10 o'clock in the morning, I'd have a stiff drink after that. Instead, I'll make do with a cup of Yorkshire's finest. Right, hopefully we haven't got a lock for a while. This pound looks a lot better. So, in terms of water level, so I think we're through it. These ones around Casterbury, though, are notoriously bad locks. They need a lot of work doing to them. just moored up here by Casterbury Lock and there's a floating cafe there it's not Holly but it's a floating cafe nonetheless and like any good narrow boater I like to give them some trade so I'm gonna go purchase a latte lovely thank you very much you. cheers thank my love you. Merry Christmas video, yeah There's a wide beam that's just pulled in for a coffee, which doesn't make life particularly easy. So I've got to squeeze round the side of him and get into a uh, into the lock. And there's someone waiting to come up the lock once Dave and I go through it. pools and the children's play areas where I've spent many happy Saturdays and Sundays with the kids. Well, right, hopefully this will be less of a stressful lock than the last one. Right, we're making our way through the lovely Casterbury Park and depending on the time of year solar's actually not so bad around here so the plan is to carry on through Croxley we're coming up to um, I think it's PNS Marine which is the uh, there's a boat yard basically coming up down here on the left hand side soon and then there's a couple of locks and into Croxley so maybe get there for just after lunchtime will be the plan. I saw that pile of rubbish on a post on Facebook recently and I mentioned it to a scrap dealer who uh, went and took, picked up all the scrap metal so kind of half the size now. Right, straight ahead in the distance is that blue bridge and that signifies we are going underneath the Metropolitan Railway line and that is the stretch between Watford Met and Croxley Green. Wow, that must have taken a 
taking some time. Oh, what's happened? I've just lost drive. Yeah, something's happened. I've just clicked out of gear. I've got no forward propulsion. Well, today just goes from bad to worse. I've now lost all drive, both forwards and backwards. So I've just pulled the boat over. Dave's over there, pulling his over. I'm on a water point. There's nowhere to moor around here. We're on a lock landing as well. The only slight advantage is that there is a marina or a boatyard, literally just on the other side of that lock. Right, let's see what I'm dealing with now. Right, just start it up. You can see that the pops are spinning. But the coupling isn't. Locks are knackered. Oh, Dave's trying to open this. You can see the levels are right because it's flowing over the top of the gates, but it's leaking so much out the front or at the lower gates at Casio Bridge Lock number 78. This looks like a two put. Oh, there he goes. Oh, He's got a bit of an angry swan with him as well. This is where Dave and I part company. Dave's carrying on to Croxley, which is that way. Well, Dave on fur, Bob, is making his way down to Croxley and he's left me here. I've got to sort out the boat. Um, I've just put something on Facebook to uh, see if anyone knows of what I should be doing on this. Um, no doubt a lot of you guys will, but um, I guess it's just come off the, the coupling, but... I'm not too sure what I'm doing, if I'm honest. Um, so yeah, I'll wait here. Dave's going to go walk back soon and get his car, so I might chill here for a bit and then go back for a walk with him. Well, my boat's broken down just above that lock there. And here is P&S Marine. So you've got a kind of a small marina there. But importantly, they've got workshops over there and a slipway in case I need it. I've just spoken to Tom, who's one of the geezers in charge. And he said he's got someone else there called Ralph to give me a call. So that'll be the plan. And I guess it's um, a couple hours of pushing and pulling to get the boat down here. And they've also got a crane. Let's hope I don't need that. Well, as you can see, I'm back in the car. I've had quite a few people respond to me on Facebook saying that it looks like that the prop shaft, um, the key part has come out from the coupling. Um, my basic questions are can I fix this on the cut or does it have to be taken out and they said it all depends on whether we can remove the prop shaft through the weed hatch. Uh, I'm waiting to hear back from a couple of the guys at the marina um, near where I've broken down um, and hopefully they'll be able to help but otherwise um, you know and in kind of what kind of time frame they can help goodness knows it's now well by the time I speak to them it'll be Monday um, that's Christmas week, um, so it's not ideal. And also the place where I am currently um, is not ideal as well. Um, it's, I think, I, I don't think I'm actually on the water point, but I'm pretty close to it. Um, I mean, I've broken down, so there's not much you can do about that, but it's not ideal. Um, oh, just such a bad day. 
and then uh, so there's this whole unknown now as to what this is going to be um, and earlier on in that lock I mean on one hand I can be thankful that the boat's floating and then it's alright it's just a prop shaft that needs to be fixed and a new coupling or something hopefully the gearbox is alright um, but compared to earlier I kid you not um, Dave and I were both saying we both nearly lost our boats in that pound um, they were resting on the rudder and it all depends on the contour of the um, of the actual um, ground because if it rests down and it's flat then yeah okay the, the hull will take that will take it and it can be stable but there's no ropes attached you know we were kind of at the mercy of it and it doesn't the boat doesn't have to lean much for it to for it to capsize entirely so that was just terrifying um and um yeah and dave on narrowboat fur bob is a very kind of calm placid kind of exactly the right kind of temperament person you'd want to be around at that, that time and he, even he was like whoa that was a bit hairy um we forced the lock there was I kid you not, honestly, like the biggest man in the world walked past at just at the right moment. Um, and really just, yeah, forced the lock. There was probably an inch difference. Um, in it just was not filling up. Um, and thank God we did. Uh, otherwise, it just, I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what would have happened, either, either, to be honest. Um, I've reported it to the CRT. They said they've had a long list of people reporting exactly the same thing they're not going to get round to doing it this year um you know this side of the new year so it'll be it'll be on their to-do list uh, pretty soon they said they got a team working upwards from denham and that was a team i saw a few weeks back in denham and they've got a lot of locks to get through before they get to Caterbury. so um i'm not going to go through there until that's all fixed <laughs> to be honest that was just horrific absolutely horrific um so yeah compared to losing the boat entirely i'll bite your arm off for a uh, knackered prop shaft and a uh, coupling which isn't attached properly um so my plan is to go back to my parents now i'm gonna have a shower or a bath uh chill out um have a warm hot meal something which isn't spaghetti bolognese and then uh, go back to the boat tonight um yeah probably about nine ten o'clock or whatever but um, I haven't got much signal in the boat so I'm going to upload the video early tonight so um, yeah if any advice and stuff well, you saw the little bit of I mean that's the clip I put on Facebook earlier um, the bit of the prop shaft they're basically saying that don't move the boat because you're going to knacker it anymore it looks like um, the, the key part has gone um, and it's designed to snap away to protect the gearbox so on one hand it's kind of worked the only thing I'm wondering as to what happened is whether um, grounding out wouldn't have done anything because obviously the propeller doesn't touch the floor. It's the rudder and the hull which would protect it. But I'm wondering whether doing all of that, maybe a rock was thrown up and hit the prop and that's nudged the prop shaft out or something like that. That's the only thing I can think of, but it didn't happen instantly because I still cruised for about an hour after the grounding before the prop shaft thing. And I just felt all power go straight away. Um, both forwards and back had gone. So we'll find out what the uh, lie of the land is in due course. But in the meantime, hope you guys are well. I'll see you tomorrow in some shape or form. Take care. Bye-bye.